Okay, our very first guest this evening is an Academy Award winning, I'm sorry, an Academy Award nominated actress. She... <laughs> you know, if you ever get a show, I'm coming around to bother you. Uh, she is an Academy nominated, an Academy Award... <laughs> she, she came very close to winning something. Have you ever seen a shirtless astronaut? Roll it, Hal. Here it is again. There you go. You see that? She will be appearing in the TV film Fugitive Nights, A Danger in the Desert, airing November 19th. <laughs> Danger in the Desert. I'm having a little trouble tonight, all right? Just relax. <laughs> Danger in the Desert, airing November 19th on another network. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the love of my life, Terry Garr. Thank you very much for coming to the new program. Tease, tease, tease. That's all you do to me. Yeah, I know, but you know, we think the world of you here. It's hard to tell. How, how have you been? <laughs> how was that? Uh, did you have a nice Halloween? Do you celebrate Halloween? Trick-or-treaters, that sort of thing? I celebrated in church, you know. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it was on a Sunday. Sure, <laughs> yes. good for you. No, I, I didn't do anything. I just I flew here to do this uh, show. Yeah? Well, and, thank you very much. Well, thank you for asking me, yeah. finally, to be on your new show. Well, we're just now getting to the G's. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. You know. I'm You're just. Sorry. You can't help yourself. You have I don't to know. Be mean to me. No, I'm not being mean to you. I'm no. just being. You know, we're having fun. Oh, is that what that? Yeah, I'm being jocular. I see. Yeah. Uh, you know, Candace Bergen was here a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago. B. Bergen. B. Mm -hmm. Bergen. <laughs> <laughs> and. And she was, talking, she was talking about something that she, I believe, hosted and that you participated in, and it was a little party, a little gathering, friends, and they dressed up their dogs and had a little talent show or something. No talent show, just a dog contest. Uh -huh. Just a dog uh, costume party. Uh, I see. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's what we did. Right. That's the kind of stuff we do in L.A. <laughs> what, do you, what kind of stuff do you do here in New York? Have these sophisticated Noel Coward parties and stuff? <laughs> you will, yeah. We I dress our dogs up in costume. We <laughs> go to the... Just sitting out there waiting for the big one, dressing up your dog, huh? <laughs> That's right. That's what we do. And, and what kind of dog do you have? I have a little cocker spaniel. Yeah. What's the dog's name? Jojo. Oh, Jojo. That's Jojo nice. O'Neill. Yeah. yeah. And uh, oh, the dog has a last name. <laughs> so, so he can get his mail. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, what did you uh, what did you dress the dog in? Well, I, I dressed him up as a desert stormtrooper. I yeah. just made it up. I put a right. little camouflage thing on his neck and well, a hat. Good. He didn't know what was going no. on, no. But there was a lot of, uh, Candy's dog was dressed up as a ballerina. Well, that's nice. <laughs> and there was one dog that won, and that was a French poodle that was dressed up as a Jew. You know, it had a yarmulke and earlocks. Well, and a big blue um, Star of David on his back. Mm -hmm. The dogs don't know. It's for us, our entertainment, you know. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, I, I've been, have you and, you and you do, you find that entertaining. Somewhat, yes. <laughs> Slightly entertaining. And is this like a weekly deal or something? <laughs> yes, every week, like clockwork. <laughs> you know how hard it is to think of costumes? Well, every week. <laughs> it must be real punishment, sure. <laughs> no, no, we did it once, just as a lark, you know? Yeah. Now we've gone on to other things. Yeah. Like, what, what else are you doing now? What's new in your life? Oh, you get the big TV show on, uh, where is that show, here? The, no, it's the, in another, it's in Thailand. Good advice. Is that what the... <laughs> <laughs> well, we do a lot of publicity for it here, but it never actually shows in this country. <laughs> What's the name of the show? It's, it it's, is good, it's good advice, right? Good advice, I think, yeah. yeah I'm not sure. And it's you and who? Uh, Shelley Long. Yeah, she's very good. She used to be on Cheers, you know. Really? Yeah. 
How was that, Cheers? <laughs> it was a big blockbuster hit. Was it? So, so, but what is the show? I don't know. It's a, it's a show. Uh, you've stuck me here. I play her sister. She plays a, uh, a marriage counselor who's getting a divorce. Therein lies the joke. Yeah. You know. Yeah, sure. So, and then Treat Williams is on the show, and we all share this sort of... Treat Williams. Now, what has he been in? He's been in big blockbuster films himself, right? Treat Williams? Well, let's see. He was in Hair. Yeah. Wasn't he in a film called Prince of the City? Yes. Yeah, you got me. See, so you, you don't know anything about the business, actually, do you? No. Well, I think he was in... <laughs> I, I don't know as much about show business as you know about dressing up dogs. <laughs> That's true. Well, I can see. Now, have you heard of this book called The Hidden Life of Dogs? Uh, will it help if I play along? <laughs> well, it's a very good book. I just wondered it because you're interested in dogs. Yeah, okay, I've heard of the book then. <laughs> Okay, that's all. No, no, what, what's the book? Tell us about the book. Well, it's You're about... making it into a movie. You're going to be in a... They're making a movie? <laughs> no, it's just about how dogs... It's a, an anthropologist wrote the book, and it's about how dogs roam around neighborhoods and how there's alpha dogs, and there's dogs that follow alpha dogs, and there's leaders, and, and how dogs behave very much like people, mm -hmm. in my opinion, except in a much more subtle way. Wow. Well, I'll have to pick up a copy. <laughs> well, go ahead. All right. We're going to uh, do a commercial here. We'll continue chatting with uh, Terry Gar right after you watch this. I bet, you, I bet you worked with Paul Simon before, haven't you? You worked with a lot of people. You know a lot of people in show business. I do. Do you know Paul Simon? I do know you worked Paul worked with Simon. him in the past? Yes. How do you like the theater here? I love this theater. Have you theater. worked in this theater before? Yes, I did. I did once. What did you do here? I did uh, the Jonathan Roth show or something. Oh, yeah, but that's, that's like two or three years ago. Oh, that doesn't count, right? Well, no, I'm you talking about hi like historically. 1926, I worked no, here. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I was, uh, somebody told me, I don't know if somebody told me this or if I imagined it, but did, did you ever date Ed Sullivan? Was that, did I? I think, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Me and Ed. Yeah. Well, what do you think of the place? It's great, isn't it's it? It's very beautiful. Thank you very much. I was wondering if I was in the Beatles dressing room, but I, I guess I was not. Huh? Now, you, you actually went to London and met the Beatles, didn't you, when you were a kid, like 19? Yes, I did. Yeah. Well, tell us about that experience. Well, no. Okay, I will, I will. This ain't exactly a run-through. Okay, okay. I know this is the big time now. We're in earlier. We have to be serious. We can't just fool around and have nothing to say. So, I uh, went to London, yes. I was doing some job in, in Europe, and um, I stayed in this apartment that the Cass Elliot had. And the guy... Mama Cass of the uh, Mamas yes, and the Papas. That's right. Yeah. More, more rock and roll memorabilia. And... Uh, so it's, they, they knew this guy, the, the road manager knew the Beatles, and so they came over one night, and, and, that, and I met them. And I was very excited. Because I said to my girlfriends when I was going to London, I said, you know, I'm going to London, I'm going to meet the Beatles. And they went, uh-huh. Yeah. And then I did. But I also, I worked with Paul Simon. He wouldn't remember this. In, um, Is this a new story? Yeah. I segued into it. I can go back to the, the uh, hidden life of dogs if you want me to. I don't care. Where, whatever, you, whatever you want to chat about. The only re the only reason I brought up the thing about dogs is uh -huh. because the alpha dogs, the dogs that the other dogs follow... Talking about, talking about fraternity dogs now. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> and uh, you're an alpha dog and I'm an alpha dog, I think. Uh -huh. That's why we bicker a little bit. This story was really? going nowhere. I think I won another $100 from all those... <laughs> Somebody told me to say that, and I get $100 now. every time something bombs, right? So now, Paul Simon, I worked with him on this show called Chivalry. Oh, Chivalry. Chivalry. It was one of those rock and roll shows. <laughs> no, you, you, mean, you mean Shindig or something. Well, it was like Shindig. It was Chivalry. I, I used to dance on all those shows. <laughs> What's so funny? Well, I mean, just sure, for you, I'm, I'm laughing because I care about you. <laughs> really? I'm, I'm laughing. Not because I'm funny or anything like that, but because you see how, how I'm, I'm much I'm trying. I'm trying to be just as, as absolutely supportive as I possibly can. Well, I think it's very, yeah. very kind and open of you. Hey, let's talk a little bit about your, uh, the big TV movie, Danger in the Desert. What, that sounds like some kind of... Uh, yes. Yeah. What is our well, it's danger there? in the desert, not yeah. danger in the desert. Yeah, I know. Right? I know. <laughs> it was a, it's but a that, w that wouldn't be a bad movie, would it? If you think about it? Yeah, about the uh, exploding yeah, uh, strawberry shortcake. Yeah, some exploding banana right, split. Right, there you go. It, it writes itself. It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about... Um, 
I play an ex LAPD policewoman, and uh, right. so I did some research with. Then they do you go out for like six weeks, a couple of months, and you spend some time in the back of a squad car, uh, running down vandals and thugs and so forth. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. No, I didn't do six weeks. I had a couple of days on the, in the valley with these. So you now know all about police work. Oh, it's very frightening. I mean, seriously, it's a scary thing. These women are unbelievable. Yeah. And they're underpaid and they're very tough. So I don't know. <laughs> What's the matter? I don't know. I thought I heard something. I thought I heard like some other thing was going to happen now, or like they were going to show the sound um, of silence. My false silence. <laughs> I always the sound of silence. Yeah. All right, Terry. Anything yes. else? Yes, I have lots more to say. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when we get back around to the G's, we'll give you a call. You know, Deborah Winger was on the show already, so don't tell me that. I don't think you need to patronize oh, me. Oh, man, it's good to see you. What, what is this thing going to be on? Let's see, it's uh, November 19th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be great. Terry, congratulations on everything. Nice to see you. Terry Garland, gentlemen. We'll be right back. As you may know, we think the world of our first guest tonight. She is an Academy Award-nominated actress and the star of this network's uh, smash blockbuster situation comedy called Good Advice. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, Terry Garr. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you, Dave. I have to apologize. I'm a little beside myself tonight. I'm... Well, the jacket doesn't fit quite right. I know. And then, and then underneath this microphone, underneath this desk here, I have like a thousand feet of loose coaxial cable. And I'm just thinking to myself, a thousand loose feet of coax, that signifies problems of some kind. So between the, the sloppy condition of the underworkings of the audio system here and, and the fact that my jacket doesn't fit, I'm a little grumpy. Oh, no, you're not. Yeah, but thanks, thanks for putting up with me. Oh, thanks for putting up with me. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know. The What's the matter? Are... Oh, nothing. You know, I'm just always uncomfortable when I do your show. Well, then stop, you know, <laughs> stop doing it. <laughs> well, all right, I will. No, no, come on, come on. No, you don't mean that seriously. No, but it is hard to do the show. I've been, I haven't been on it in a while, you know, because. Um... Last time you were here, I think it was like October or something. Yeah, there was an election in New York. There was a fire in L.A. Mm -hmm. And I was told that I wasn't, you know, very good. I didn't finish now, my job. who told jokes. you that? I didn't tell you that, did I? Who do you think? I? I don't know. I have no idea. People on the street? Who told you that? Morty. Our producer, Bob Morton? Yeah. Oh, so he said, go home and play the home version of mm -hmm. the David Letterman mm -hmm. show. Go home and insult yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when he says you're not very good, you can just say to him, well, you're no Michael Todd. <laughs> That's right, no Spiroscurus. <laughs> yeah. Whoever that was. I don't know who that was either. Okay. Uh, but you shouldn't take that seriously. No, no, I shouldn't. No. Then what happens? I don't know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not living your life. You see, he's right. I don't finish with a story. Well, I know you're married. You've got married. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm preoccupied with the excessive Why don't you get material. a suit that... Well, I don't know. You'd think I'd have one that would fit, you'd wouldn't you? you think that. A guy so. in your position. Yeah. No, really. Anyway. Yes, yes, I got married. And I didn't marry you. Well, I know that. I'm, I'm I, aware of that. As much as I'd planned on it at yeah. a certain point. That would have been a hell of a thing. Really? Oh, think yeah, so? would, yeah. I probably wouldn't have worked more no, than 10 no. minutes, 10 or 20 minutes. I wouldn't minutes. think so, no. Because it's not working now, what I have. Exactly. So, oh, I, your marriage is not working now? Oh, no, it's... Is that what you said? Oh, honey. Um, it's sort of working. How long had you known the guy? A couple of years or so. Well, that's good. He, I don't think he really wanted to get married, because we kept trying to get married to the mm -hmm. different places, and always if something would happen, there'd be some snag, you know, mm -hmm. we'd forget the papers. Mix up. Some mix up. Paperwork problem. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and then finally we got married in Mexico, and, and now it's over with. Well, no, now, <laughs> yeah, I, you must be, you must be uh, joking about this, but tell us about the <laughs> ceremony in Mexico. 
Where, what city in Mexico? Um, Guadalajara, L Acapulco? Los Cabos San Lucas. Oh, Cabos San Lucas. Si. San Lucas? San Lucas? I don't know. Uh, I don't know and um, well, we got married there and it was a sunset. It was at six o'clock. Oh, beautiful, and it was breathtaking. Very lovely. Yeah. And we just sort of invited the people that were around the pool because I didn't think I was going to be able to pull it off this time either. We got four waiters to be the uh, witnesses. Uh -huh. And then um, this woman, uh, uh, Judge Marta came in and she read the whole thing in Spanish, which was very long, 20 minutes. I didn't know what I was saying. They said, say si, I go si. Uh -huh. And then afterwards I asked them what I said yes to. <laughs> and they told me that I'm supposed to obey my husband. Right. And I said, no, this is never going to work. And it turns out that it's not. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear Honey, that. I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're just kidding, business. of course. Where yeah, it's just a story. <sighs> it's over. Yeah. <laughs> what, what does your husband do for a living? He's a builder. Oh, that's good. He builds buildings and houses and yeah. things like that. Well, I, I kind of get and the concept you know, of a builder. And he flies yeah. a plane. You know. He's a pilot as yeah, well? Yeah, Wow. Now, see, I have a lot of admiration for people who fly their own planes. Me too. Yeah. It, is it like a, a twin engine, multi-engine rated? Does he have it's that kind of thing? It's a single engine plane. Single engine? And he just got How many hours does he have? rating so he can fly through the fog. Fog, yeah. How many hours does he have? I don't know. 27, 28? <laughs> I don't know about the hours. <laughs> Dave. Well, do you, have you gone up with him? Have you flown with him? I have, uh, but not anymore. How, how come? Trouble? Well, this is a story I'm not sure I should tell, but the last time we went through this desert thing, the plane was going like this and like this and like this, and I'm going, oh my God, oh Jesus, oh God, oh my God, oh Jesus. It was horrible. And he said, now if you would only make those noises when we were making love. And I said, you know, this is the last joke you're going to make with me in this plane. And I haven't been in that plane since. You think that's funny, Dave? How many, how many hours does he have in the sack? <laughs> I said, I know. Look at this. Really? Really? Look at how ridiculous it is that is. It's just stupid, isn't it? But yeah. Let's talk about the color of this. What do you call this? Puce? <laughs> no, it's not puce. This is this is olive, like a olive green. Oh yeah, it's an olive green. Yeah, olive. The, I, I, the complaint is not with the color; it's I, with the fit. Well, my complaint is with the color, but you know, your complaint is with the fit. Yeah. Maybe some other people have some other. Complaints. Yeah, but see, see now maybe if it fit properly, you wouldn't notice Don't the you color. Shake your finger at me like that. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> Why don't you get a cab? <laughs> oh, now, what have I done? Oh, we're just, I, I'm okay, teasing we're with you. Okay, now, just playing. relax. Settle down. Take a sedative. Can we get you something? <laughs> you know what it is? It's the heat. It's made everybody crazy. It's made everybody, like crazy. Made everybody crazy. It's horrible. Oh, God. Jeez. The heat. <sighs> we have to uh, pause here for a second. We're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back with Terry Garr. Terry Gar is here. Yes, we'll be out, and we have, uh, you like children, don't you? Like kids? Yes, I we do. We have a little two-year-old, Daniel Haber. He identifies automobiles. I can do that. Well, I know, but, <laughs> but you're not two. This, not? No, no, oh. this is an amazing uh, bit of uh, skill for the kids. I kid. saw him rehearsing. He's quite amazing. Points at cars and tells you exactly what they are. Two years old. To me, that's phenomenal. And also, our, our good friends from uh, the store around the corner, uh, Mujibur and Sirajul, they're in uh, Houston, Texas, where they saw the uh, sixth game of the NBA playoffs yesterday. Yeah. I'm trying to get comfortable here, please. Yeah, I know. It's not Thank easy you. for you, is it? Uh, so, you, in addition to being in Mexico and getting married and traveling around and so forth, you were uh, in France recently doing a film with yes. uh, Robert Altman. Yes, I That's was. That's pretty exciting. Yes, it was. What part of France? Paris, France. Wow, the city of light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, there's this movie about fashion world, you know, about the, the fashion Haute world. Haute cuisine? Not exactly. Haute couture. Haute couture. <laughs> yes, it's obviously something you wouldn't know anything about. What, what if, I said something to do with the restaurant world there. Is what I, I think we did. Well, close well, enough. You know, we dealt with the, uh, with the demi monde and the, the beau monde and the monde. Oh, and I don't the, know what that is. The avant garde. It's, yeah. a, it's a whole different world. It's not, we're not involved in it. They're making fun of the fashion world. They just, they're talking about how shallow it is in this uh. movie. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but in the movie, we went to a dog fashion show, and I tried to take a, a video of it, but the video I took turned out, remember that monkey cam you used to have? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like the monkey cam, but the monkey on drugs or something. It was like, whoa! <laughs> so I didn't get to bring it here for you. But I wanted you to know there was uh, you know, a guy dressed in leather and a dog dressed in leather, and a guy dressed in kilts and the dog dressed in mm -hmm. kilts. It's, it's wonderful. It's not a good idea. Yeah, I think dogs like it. But they, dogs hate it. If dogs could talk, they'd say,
say, please dress no, me no, up. No, no, dogs don't want any part of it. It, it assaults the, the dignity of the animal when oh, you dress them up like that. Dignity. No, it really you does. Know. It's okay for a guy to get himself in a bonehead outfit and walk around. This suit, for example. <laughs> But you don't, you don't want to force that on an unsuspecting little dog. Well, they don't really know. When I was a little girl... Do you girl, dress up your dogs? I used to do this. It was my profession when I was a child, just to dress my dog and, and um, like, I'd put him in my brother's underwear and stick his tail out the pee hole and send him out in the neighborhood. <laughs> and he didn't know, and he got a lot of, you know, positive feedback, I should say. <laughs> and they like it. But anyway, it show, that definitely shows how you know, shallow the fashion business is. I'm 47 years old. Yeah. I've never heard that expression. What? The peel? <laughs> well, you what just, is that thing in just, the shorts? It's, the... Just, it's just underwear. That's okay. all it is. Excuse me. It's just underwear. Everybody knows how to use it. You know, I have two older brothers, and I grew up with all these underwear around, so I know that was, they were good for, they were for something, so I put them on the dog. Tell us mind, about, the, uh, about the TV show, uh, uh, Good Advice. Oh, yeah, what about it? Is it good advice or bad advice? It's uh, good advice. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, um, it's on on Wednesday nights at 8.30. You're on CBS? You're on CBS, on mm -hmm. our, our very fav favorite Does channel. it come on right after that Roseanne? No, that's on ABC, ABC. and that's on Tuesday nights. Tuesday you night. don't watch TV, do But does it come on right after that Seinfeld? Because that's a good spot if you can get on right after that Seinfeld. <laughs> I'm telling you, everybody's watching that Seinfeld. Is it on right after Seinfeld? For a couple of times, it was on right after that Murphy Brown, but then they took it off that, and they put it right on after that nanny thing. But it's going to probably, uh, we don't know where it's going to go. It yeah. might end up in uh, Canarsie. And it's, <laughs> and it's you and uh, Shelley Long, and you, play, Long. you play sisters, and you, yeah. you're fighting crime, and you're, what are you? <laughs> huh? Well, yeah, we get involved in hostage situations, mostly. <laughs> no, we're just sisters, and that she's a pulled-together person, and I'm kind of you're flaky. You're a doofus. I'm a doofus. Yeah. This is hilarious. This are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. uh, and what, now it's, it's on now, or it's because I know it was on for a while, and then it wasn't on for a while. I know. I don't know anything about it. Yes, it's on now, and then it was on before, and it's going to be on some more this summer, or not. Uh -huh. That's the way they do things. Except for you, everything else has to be, be you know, a big trial. You, they just say, Dave, do what you want. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's because coat. I'm dressed for fun. Yeah, I got David Burns' old coat here. That's what this is. He was in the suit last week. Uh, <clears throat> uh, any, anything else we can chat about, or do you have to take off? Well, you off know, or? when I was in France, I yeah. went to the um, French ambassadors. I was invited to tea. Oh, yeah. Pamela Harriman's. Oh, she's great. You don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> You're not involved in this world. I tried to tell you. Yeah, I know. Um, and I, well, I don't know. This isn't a very good story, but I almost... Well, I, save it for somebody else's show, then. <laughs> No, come on, let's hear it. You start it now. You're a T, the ambassador, yes, the American and I ambassador choked, to France. And I had to get the Heimlich maneuver, remover. Well, you know. The I'm... Heimlich remover. <laughs> <laughs> you had your Heimlich removed, eh? Yes, I did. Very painful. At Very the painful. French embassy. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so. So that, is, is that thought, the story? Well, pretty much the story. Oh, man. See, I was right. Oh, you no, have... I know you weren't right. I have so much anxiety about doing this show that I, I, try, I had a dream the other night. You know, Ellen Burstyn once told me this. There's a collective consciousness out mm -hmm. there. And if you go to sleep at night and you're doing a part and you say to your consciousness, put in my brain what I'm supposed to do the next day. Right. And then I did that the other night, and I came up with this story about I was kidnapped by aliens. There was 11 of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, it was hilarious. I came on the show, and everyone was laughing so hard. They were falling down and holding themselves. And then I woke up in the morning, and I said, I've got to remember this. And I, it wasn't funny at all. Oh, no. Just like that story about the uh, uh, Heimlich. Are you going to be in town tomorrow? Oh, God. Are you yeah. going to be in town tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it, 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 take that story and tell it on Regis. <laughs> It'll be fine tomorrow morning. Are you going to cut it from this show? Please cut it. No. I'm so sorry. No, we're going to leave it. I think Morty was right. Oh, who Keep cares what on. Morty thinks? Oh, sign him up. He's, yeah. he's right. He knows what he's doing. <clears throat> you smell very nice. Well, that's, that's good. That's Yeah, absolutely. And are you having a, a nice summer so far? Yes. All right. Good to see you again, Terry. Good to see Thank you. you. I thought you did very well today.
Let me tell you something. Yeah, uh, during rehearsal, we had a great idea. We had a dog, a beautiful dog by the name of Travis, big golden retriever, lovely animal. We mounted a camera to Travis. Yeah, what happened to that? Well, the, the problem was we needed one of those remote cameras, and he had cable. So it was <laughs> like, like a dog hooked up to a thousand feet of garden hose. That's not going to work. Travis won't be here tonight. He'll be here tomorrow night. It'll even be... Uh, well, no, seriously. Oh, man, they're turning hostile and ugly, aren't they? <laughs> Try and come back tomorrow night, and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first guest is an Academy Award-nominated actress who appeared in the motion pictures Dumb and Dumber, uh, also in Tootsie, and in Mr. Mom, she was married to Batman. In Mr. Mom, exactly. <laughs> Please welcome our dear old friend, Terry Gar. Here we go. <laughs> Terry Gar, you look wonderful. You look, you, you, every time I see you, you look younger and younger, and you look uh, fit and, and ready to go for a spring and summer, and nice to have you with us. But except when I touched you, you kind of pulled away, and the more I talked to you, you kinda, I could just feel your body recoiling like that. Why, why was that? I don't know. You frightened me. I didn't frighten you. Not a... No, it's your, your whole thing. What do you mean, my whole thing? <laughs> You know, you're out to get there. I am not out to get you. No. I'm just out. I wanted to welcome you. I wanted to make sure you felt welcome. And I, I wanted to convey that through a personal little touch like that or okay. a, a hug or a pat like okay. that. Okay. I, I get it and I appreciate it. Oh, good. You, Thank you. And you yeah. look very well and healthy yourself. Thank you very much. I'm you in the top physical condition of my no. life. Yeah. You were always in the top physical. Yeah. See? Truly one of the great showmen of the 20th century. <laughs> How you been? Tell me about your uh, husband. How'd that work out? Did you ever get married? You got married, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Who did you marry? Some guy. No, but did you marry the guy who was uh, like a contractor? Is yes, that yes. What, what happened to the pilot, the guy who was a pilot? He's a pilot dash Pilot contractor. and a contractor. Just like I'm an actor's dash dancer. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. sure, yeah. Now, how, how, how long have you been married? I don't know. A couple years ago. Something no, no, no. Seriously, how long have you been married? I don't know. Well, you should we'll know. Two years? No, a year and a half. I don't know. Yeah, a year and a half. Oh, man, <laughs> you, should, you should pin this down. I should? Yeah, because I bet you if he was here, what's his name, Ed? No, let's see. John. <laughs> oh, that was cute. <laughs> if he was here, he'd know exactly, wouldn't he? No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, yeah nothing so to do with him. Is working out all right? Does he take you flying? Does he do? Well, you know, he tries to take me flying, but I don't. I, when I first was dating him, he, I went on the plane with him. Yeah, you have to do that. Sure. Yeah, 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 to show that you have lots of guts and stuff. But then after I got to know him, especially after I got married to him and realized. Uh, How long ago did you get married? <laughs> Three or four years ago? Yeah. Or maybe uh, last year. I Are don't you, know. Is it still like a honeymoon period for you? Not anymore? exactly. Not exactly. No. I would say no. Is, it, is this your first marriage? My first marriage. What yes. about Ed? Had Ed been married before? Ed is my brother. Oh, well, I don't know. Oh, who is. Um, Ed, uh, n yes, he was married to a stewardess. It's all about flying, you know. So, um, well, then let's hear a story about one of those things. What, well, the when he was married to the stewardess. Oh, no, you don't Come know. on. No, no. Long layovers in Cincinnati? Let's yeah. hear about him. No, I think it had to do a lot with free tickets on that plane or something. Whatever you want, yeah. sure. So anyway, he's very interested in flying. How do they open? Do you ever have trouble opening those airline peanuts? Boy, those are just... Yeah, ooh, those ooh, are terrible. You can't... Ooh, ooh, uh, 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 uh. Ask Ed about that. You are the greatest showman of the 20th century. <laughs> you can just... I'm a dweeb. Oh, oh I'm a dweeb. You're the best. You're the best of the best. The dweeb. Oh. All right, so now you, you, you don't go flying anymore. No, no. How yeah, come? Because I realized that he can't uh, work the VCR, not to mention the CD player, any of that stuff, nor does he even read the directions. Mm -hmm. So well, how can I get an airplane with him? Yeah. But, you know, then he, he has these guys over there, pilots, and they have these parties. Pilot buddies, pilot, pilot parties. And they say <laughs> stuff like, uh, did you see this guy was 90 Zulu on my tail? Ha, and they laugh, and I don't know what the hell they're talking about. So I think I, I don't belong in with them. Uh -huh. or in a plane with anyone that talks like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Do you, do, but you know what would be nice? Uh, fly away together on romantic uh, weekends or something. Fly yeah, out to like yeah. the Santa Barbara or something. Well, we or... tried to do that. But you know, he likes to go on these camping trips. He loads up the plane like Daniel Boone. He puts yeah. in. Uh, rafts and tents and food stuffs and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And the last one he was going on, he couldn't make it to where he was going, so he ended up in uh, somewhere in Idaho and snowed in. Mm -hmm. And he had to sleep in a, a men's room on the floor. Wow. Cause, cause he, That's not very romantic. No, but he liked it because was, there was a heater in there. You know, they didn't have planes when, when Daniel Boone was alive. They didn't? No, they didn't have planes. Well, then how'd he get around? Well, <laughs>
Jeez. Uh, now you you have a uh, you have a joke for us. Okay, I have a joke. This is a great joke. I know what this is. I you heard, do? I heard the joke. It's oh, a terrific I don't joke. Tell, you. tell the joke. Well, it's just for you and I or them too. Well, it's for them, okay. of course. Tell you, it's not that great a joke, and also it has uh, sexist overtones. But well, I'll tell don't, it anyway don't because it's a show It's no. a wonderful okay. joke. It's a fabulous joke. Yeah. So this uh, this guy has a secret drawer in his house that he uh, locks, and he never lets his wife see it. He's been married for 50 years. Mm -hmm. So one day the doorbell rings, and his wife runs over and looks in the drawer, and there's two kernels of corn and a big wad of money. Mm. So the uh, the man comes back, and the wife says, "All right, explain to me what was in this drawer. What what is all that?" He says, "Well, all right, I'll tell you now that you've seen it. Every time I wasn't faithful to you in the 50 years that we were married, I put a kernel of corn in there." Hmm. She said, well, I guess that's not so bad, you know, two times Once in, every 25 in, years. in yeah. 50 years. And, then, and what's that lot of money there for? And he said, well, every time I got a bushel of corn, I'd go cash it in for a $100 bill. <laughs> Good joke. Cute. It's a sexist joke. Well, it's a little bit about, uh, you know. It's cute, though. It's about how men are sexist. It's interesting to me that you know how long that guy was married, but you don't know how long you've been married. No, I don't. Yeah, okay. Uh, can you hang around a little bit? We have to do a commercial. Oh, please let me I hang know the kids would be disappointed if you were gone when we came back. <laughs> would the kids? The kids would be. Okay, I'll stay. <laughs> She's going to do it for the kids. We'll be right back with Terry Garr. Here, Chris O'Donnell, Branford Marcellus, and the woman you just saw there all night long, by the way, we're doing audience makeovers. It's a lot of fun. Nice. Something fun for the uh, summer. Yeah. Uh, that's Winnie Cass. We uh, dragged her off Broadway, and she'll be uh, a guest on the program this evening. Looks great, doesn't she? Yes. Yeah. All she has to have is one good story. Exactly. And that's all, you know, that's all we wanted from you, too. I had known that, I know. That I would have been nervous. <laughs> Do you have advice for the guest? You've been on the show many, yes, many yes. times. Whoa. Well, first of all, I would tell her, always take the, the car if they offer it, you know, the limo. Because oh, yeah. I used to say, no, no, that's okay. I don't know why. I thought it, I'd be more, you know, groovy if I just walked. Right. But then that time that... Uh, I hate to bring this up again, but remember that time I took a shower? And oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I had to walk all the way home with, you know, like wet underground garments. Well, so. this is certainly not a first for no. you. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. And the other thing I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, I know. Allow me the opportunity to apologize for that coarse remark. I'm sorry. Don't ever touch me. I, I like touching you. you, have, you have, I now stop it. You have wonderful skin. You have love. Do you, do you use a moisturizer? <laughs> <laughs> now, the other advice I would have for this uh, girl is to uh, not pay any attention to the notes. Why not? Because it would just lead her astray. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so shall we disregard the notes? No. We can't go much farther astray, can we? No. <laughs> uh, no. Tell, uh, tell, tell me about your uh, career. What's uh, glad to glad to hear your career is going so good. My career. Yeah. Tell me you about know, your career. I'm going into. Um... Now, when you do that, we can't see you. Sit around oh. like an adult. There you go. <laughs> like a kid who's had too many tootsie rolls. Just relax. <laughs> Terry. Yes. It's me, Dave. Oh, I... Hi. I'm. Um... Woo. I'm going to go Tomorrow into night, yeah. we're having a dog with a camera mounted to its I head. I know. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I be... was going to have the, mo the Molly cam tonight. Your, your daughter. Yeah, yeah we're going to put a camera on your daughter. She would have been very good. Yeah. She's going to run 100 miles an hour, Molly. So it would have been really interesting. You, you have a child that can run 100 miles right. an hour? That's right. Well, you should travel her. Take her on the road. I'm going to. What are you doing planning? S start small. Work at truck stops. Okay. You know, bets. <laughs> Bet with the truckers. All right. Uh, how fast that uh, Peterbilt go? Oh, about 80. I, I got a, I got a, how old is she? A year and a half. I got a year and a half year old go 100. And you'll make a fortune. <laughs> Just right down the interstate. Good idea, Dave. That'll take up the slack for my own career. Yeah, all right. Tell, let's talk about your career. How's that going? Let's, well, it's going very, very well. What's well. new with you? You had a show right here on uh, CBS. Yes, I You know, was. it's the Tiffany Network, CBS. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? It's like a jewel or something? Exactly. Oh, okay. Well, I was uh, on a show with Delta Burke, and that wasn't picked up. And then last year I was on a show uh, with, on CBS with uh, somebody else, uh, Shelley Long, and that wasn't picked up. <laughs> And um, even, I forget who she you is. You don't even take the trouble to memorize the cast. Is that it's a sad well, commentary? Why should I? Yeah, because I know. it's not going to last. Yeah, yeah. 
So <laughs> then I'm thinking this year I'm going to go on a show that's already hit like ER or something and then just drive it into there. <laughs> no, no, no. And, uh, why go on a show that's already, that's on the line? What about it's film never... work? Uh, what about films? You should be making more films. You were in that uh, uh, Ready to Wear. I was. The, the uh, Altman, Robert Altman film. I never saw it. I, I remember, uh, wasn't Danny Aiello in that? I, I don't was. know. <laughs> See, like it was a huge cast, but I don't, I, you don't even know who was I in that. I have a feeling you didn't see it. Either. I saw the oh, damn thing. I lying. saw it. I did so. Boston. No, I saw it. Okay. So, um, I was just offered a movie called Stripper Mom, No Nudity. I think that's the name of it. Stripper Mom, No Nudity is the name of the movie? <laughs> well, that was the offer that they gave me, but uh -huh. it maybe just means, want to be in Stripper Mom, No Nudity. Yeah, I see. But So, when can we see you in Stripper Mom? I don't think you're going to see me in that one. <laughs> it's not about me. The story's about the son or something, so, you know. Oh, the son is a stripper. No, a stripper mom, I think, would be me. Oh, mom is a stripper. Well, maybe they're just giving it that title so that people will, you know, walk, look at it. And then they'll get in the theater and they'll go, this isn't about a stripper mom. This is about some kid and yeah. his girlfriend on their bikes. You know, well, it's completely misleading. That's exactly. It's deceptive. That's exactly uh, right. Did you go see Pocahontas in the park on a Saturday night? No, I didn't. I missed that. Yeah, that must have been a lot of fun. I got fun. here just in time for the fireworks, so it was fabulous. Oh, yeah, 100,000 people in the rain. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. What does that lawn look like by now, I wonder? What is it? Oh, they've messed up like 80,000 tons of garbage. But they got to get all cleaned up, yeah. Yeah. It was an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. Is that Giuliani? Uh, Giuliani. Giuliani. What's his name? Giuliani. Giuliani, yeah. <laughs> very hip. Uh, I and, don't know. And Terry, it's a very yeah. sad time in the program now because we, we must say goodbye to you. Don't you have anything else to ask me? I have plenty of other oh, things to ask you, but we, have to, we, still, we have to say goodbye. Well, why don't you hang around and go to dinner with the audience, and then they can ask you anything. <laughs> All right. Nice to see you. My best to the family. Thank you very much. Have a great summer. I'm going to kiss your hand now. Okay. Now, don't jerk it away at the last minute. All right. I hate that. Don't. Thank you very much. Terry Garrow. We'll be right back, folks. Lovely, uh, a lovely woman. If I take a second here to tell you a little something about Terry Garr. She's a uh, lovely woman. I need those cards. Where are you going? <laughs> By the way, let me take a second here to tell you about uh, Tony Mendez. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I hope I don't, I don't want to embarrass you, Tony. Do you mind if I tell the people? Today is Tony Inky Mendez's birthday. Congratulations, Tony. <laughs> Tony, do you mind if I tell them how old you are? Tony, and you won't believe this, Tony is 60 years old today. <laughs> he takes nice care of himself, don't he? Sure it does. Welcome, uh, sir. Uh, Anton, do me a favor. Are you busy right now? You're not busy when I talk to the guests, are you? Could you slip across the street and get me some coffee? You know, just, a, just a big, like, jumbo coffee. Go just ahead. across the street. Thanks, Anton. Thanks, Paul, for releasing Anton. Yeah, sure. Okay, I appreciate it. And just as soon as you can. Thank you very much. That'll be nice. Anyway, getting back to uh, Terry Garr, I just want to tell you one thing about Terry Garr. She's a lovely woman. Also on the show tonight, George Stephanopoulos will be joining us and Amanda Marshall. Let's continue now with the program, shall we? Our first guest is an old friend of ours, and we're always delighted when she pays us a visit. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely and talented Terry Garr. Terry? Very nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Welcome Dave. back to New York City. You handed me a little packet of something here. What is this? Tell people what that is. Well, it's a little gift for you. To, oh, it's thanks. a little something to remind you of me. It's uh -huh. called the Tea Garden. The Tea Garden. Now, do you have money in this? Do you get a little yeah, something out of this? Yeah, I have quite a bit of money in that. Wow, nice going. Now, what is it? Hey, this would be like an item you buy in the pro shops, uh, novelty uh, stores? No, you have to send away for this. The send magazines, away. yeah. You have a catalog, right? Mm -hmm. And what does that set somebody back? What is, what's the value of this item? It's $1.89. Do $1.89? Mm -hmm. Wow. And what, are you, what is your cut? Actually, I, I don't have any cut. I just buy a whole bunch of these and give them to people. 
And it's sort of like a Japanese gift to give uh -huh. to people, you know, to remind them of you. In, in what sense is it Japanese? Because the Japanese are avid golfers, is it? Well, no, uh -huh. but that's a very good oh, guess. Oh, thanks, Anton. Uh, Terry, can we get you something? Hi, Anton. Nice to see you. Nice Thank yourself. you. I appreciate it. Nice Thank going. You. Would you like something? No, thanks. Thank that's you. okay. Thank you. I don't know what's the matter with the coffee. So terrorists have stolen our coffee equipment. Excuse me, just a minute. I hope you're going to be okay. Oh, man, now that, that's a flavorful blend. Thank you very much. Nice job. So now you go out on the golf course, perhaps, or even if you're just laying out on the lawn or mm -hmm. something, right. and you put this little tea down, and then you put this thing on top of it, and it holds your cigar. Right, right. See, it's called the tea gar. Wow. Oh, it holds your cigar for cigar smokers. Oh, that's cute. Nice especially to have you here. Especially for you. Especially Thank you. for you. I don't, it's okay. interesting. I don't play golf. I don't smoke cigars. But thanks for thinking of me anyway. I thought you smoked cigars. Gave them up a year ago. Well, would it be all right if I took that back then? Yeah, because sure. I want to give it to someone who's... Give it to one of your Japanese friends. So, uh, I understand I'm... you're going to Florida. What are, you, what are you doing in Florida? Well, yeah. Spring I... break? No, no, Dave. I, I'm, uh, I came here to do your show so I could go down to Florida and pick up my aunt who's 87. Oh, 87 years I'm old. i take her back to L.A. Well, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm, live with my mom. Well, what is your aunt's name? Her name is Teresa. Uh -huh. Well, that'd be good. You have a good relationship with Teresa? Uh, pretty good, yeah. Yeah. I tease her a lot. And, yeah. you know, I think she's maybe my real mother. I'm not sure. Could something like that have happened? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, my parents were in vaudeville over the road a lot. You never know. You never I do know, do you? I hear stories from them all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're going to take her back in, what is it, you get a U-Haul and that kind of thing? And... No, I'm just going to tell her I'm taking her back to L.A. because uh, she's, you know, has to be with, she's going to be with my mom. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I go to visit her, she'll say stuff like, um, you know, I think there's somebody in the yard. I want to call the police. And I say, no, no, there's nobody in the yard. And she says, yes, I think there's someone in the yard. I want to call the police. How do you call 911? Uh. So I say, you know, I'm not going to tell you. And she says, come on, how do you call 911? I say, I am not going to tell you, Aunt Terry. So then she calls 411. And she says, how do I call 911? <laughs> and the lady says, 911. And she goes, yeah. How do I call it? She says, you call 911. I said, so don't you see? You just pick up and call 911. She goes, oh, you goofy kids, you're devils. You're always, you know, that's the kind of stuff I have to deal with. So I figured it'd be better if she's with my mom and they did this yeah. stuff together. But she's okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, she said, it's only, you know, I'm going to get like that too, probably. And you are already like I that. I'm a little like that now. That's right. <laughs> How, uh, uh, by the way, how's your daughter, your baby girl? Oh, she's the cutest thing in the world. How old is she now? Oh, I forgot the picture. Oh, she's three and a half. You, yeah, you remembered this. I know. You remembered the tea gar, but you forgot the pictures of your daughter. Well, maybe it's not good to have pictures of her out here anyway, because she's already, you know. What, you'd like to show them to me? I'd like to see what she looks like. Oh, she's so darling. Yeah. She's so darling. How old is she? Three and a half. Mm -hmm. She wants to be an actress. Oh, that's good. Would you like her to be an actress? Oh, God, no. Yeah. Keep telling her to be a doctor, you know, or a lawyer or yeah. something. I mean, would you like any child of yours to be an actress? I don't think so. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm guessing probably not, but then you can't really say that. You because... can't say, can you? No, no. you can't But really. anyway, she's so yeah. darling. So what, what else have you been doing now? What's new in your life? Well, I just stay home mostly uh -huh. and um, take care of this little girl and, and make dinner and watch Jeopardy. It, everything's changed, you know. Yeah. It used to be that I would be out every night and running around and stuff. Now, do, you still, do you still spend part of your time here in New York City? No, no, I never come here. Why, why, what would be the point? But you used to have, like, a place here in New York City. I did, and I still yeah. do, but, you know, um, it's harder the older you get. And not that I'm getting older, but sometimes... How old are you? I'm in my early 60s. I like, uh... Like Tony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Tony. Anyway, um, and it's very nice to be here now because I'm finally, you know, staying in a hotel. All the times when I come here before, I would never, you know, do anything like that because I always wanted to remain pure. So I would never get a car if you'd send it There's for me. Is something impure about staying in a hotel? What, are you a Quaker? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. What are you, Amish? I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I'm, I, uh, let, me just, let me just take a second here to apologize. Oh, you Quakers. I don't know what that means. No. Just a dumb joke. Forgive me. I'm, I'm not drinking my usual coffee. I had to send out for it tonight. And the audience still hasn't recovered. Uh, all right, so something about staying at the hotel troubled you. Well, I just didn't want to be too, um, I didn't want to be too involved in luxury, you know. I didn't want to have a limo, and I didn't want to have a hotel, because I thought it, would, it, would, it might ruin the purity of my, my Quaker uh, life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now I'm doing it, and I like to take the limousine, and I like to, to get the rides, and I like to stay at the hotel. It's actually very nice. Yeah, good. They have a, a nice restaurant there called the Halcyon. You go there, and you have dinner, and you fall asleep right in your mashed potatoes. <laughs> I mean, what a great idea. Yeah. I never knew this before. Yeah, we have, a, we have a clip of you on the dating game. Oh, no. Yeah. We have some videotape of you. Uh, is it the dating game? You know what year this is, Terry? Uh, 1951. 19... 
I don't know. What do you think it might be? 1970? I don't know. What was I thinking? Why did I do this? Here we go. Were you a contestant or a celebrity? Or a celebrity contestant? I wasn't a celebrity. I wasn't even a person. You weren't a person? No. That's odd. I was an animal. But you were pure. You didn't stay in there? I bet you didn't stay in their hotel either, did you? Oh, no. No, no. Well, are we going to see this? Oh, I'm sorry. I dozed off. I'm sorry. Huh? Let's, uh, if, if you have the uh, videotape of Terry Gar, let's take a look at it now on the dating game. Watch. Now you must matter up an answer. Now, which one will it be? Will it be bachelor number one, bachelor number two, or bachelor number three? <laughs> Terry, which one gets the date? Bachelor number two. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. People say we're well, grumbles, I think. <laughs> monkey around. <laughs> How long were you guys married? He was in a group called the Fuzzy Lumps. Uh, oh, I Lord. I, I don't know whatever happened to him, but I, I guess I could say it now. I was a little disappointed when I actually saw him. Why? Look at that guy. <laughs> He's got that blow dryer working, don't he? Got that blow dried, got the blow dried smile, as a matter of fact. Oh, uh, gosh. Where did you guys go on your dream date? We went to Las Vegas. Yeah. And we were supposed to see Eddie Fisher, but I opted out on that just so I could play the nickel slot yeah. machines, you know? <laughs> then later, a friend of mine won a trip with someone, and, they, and it was a trip to Belgium. And then she saw Wow. Him. Yeah, I know. She didn't want to go. So he asked me to go. So mm -hmm. I said, great, let's go to Belgium. So we went to Belgium. We went to this place called Kanaki and Zoot. Kanaki and Zoot. Yeah. Have you been there? No, oh. it's uh... It's a seaside resort that... Um... Oh, Zoot is what? By the sea? Is that what it means? Zoot? I think Zee? so, yeah. That... But that's, that sounds Dutch, not Belgian. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Don't yeah, no, no sense in looking up the facts. No. So we went there just, and Just we... talking to Dave, just wild, vague hunches, close enough for Dave. No, I try to do the best no, I can fine. for you. Fine. Thank no, you. Fine. You know, you look very good. Thank you. It's one of the best rehearsals we've ever had. I mean, they're taping, right? No. Oh, no, thank yeah. God. Because uh, I'm not up to speed. No, you'll be fine later for the show. We, have, we break now. We'll tear everything down, have dinner, and come back and do the oh, real show. Oh, my God. It's such a relief. Right. Then I'll get it together. Uh, you tell us the joke. You have a joke for us? All right. So this guy goes into a bar. And he, he opens a briefcase and he puts out a, a, a little man and a guy and a piano and the guy starts playing the piano. Guy goes into a bar, opens a briefcase, there's a tiny man and a tiny piano. Yeah. Puts can... them both on the bar. Mm -hmm. All right. You're going to repeat the whole well, thing? Well, no, I just, I, <laughs> could, is, could that happen? Does that happen? I know they're cloning and it's stuff, but could something like, oh, it's that's right, it's a joke. Okay, sure, I'm sorry. So the bartender comes up and says, hey, that is fabulous. How did you do that? He's, He's well, knocked out. He's never seen a tiny guy playing a piano before <laughs> in his bar. That's right. You're making the rhythm of this joke work very well, by the Did way. Did he have air holes in the briefcase? Or he'd die. The thing would die if he didn't have the air holes. Wait a minute, there's more to this joke. Around. Oh, my God, he's dead. My tiny little... he got air holes. And, and maybe some lettuce for him to eat. Lettuce? Because little people only eat vegetables, Well, the 14, not... I don't know, okay, for heaven's sake. 14 inches, and he's playing the piano, and the bartender says, that is fabulous. How did you do that? Mm -hmm. He says, no, there's more. I have a little genie in my pocket. And oh, my everything, God. And really with air holes. Yeah. And every time... <laughs> so he can breathe... And any time I want to wish, I just ask this genie for something. Uh -huh. So the, he said to the bartender, would you like to try it? And he says, well, yeah, I would. He says, what do you want? He says, I want 50 million bucks. He says, okay. Wow. He asks, he says, I want 50 million bucks. Five minutes go by, and the bar is filled with 50 million ducks. 50 million ducks? Yes. And the bartender says, hey, hey, what's going on here? And, he, and the guy says, yeah, I know. You think I asked for a 14-inch pianist? <laughs> Back. Thank you, Anton. Oh, oh, that's cute. Professional show business. That's a well, very cute story. How's your mom? She's good. Good, good. She, well, she and my aunt are, you know. Yeah, they're on the outs? No, no. you know, they're about in the same place. You oh, know, oh, they're and, a little, a little, uh, yeah. Well, you know, like we're all God going there. God bless them, exactly. Exactly. And, and you're, uh, you got a movie? Uh, when is the movie? What did we oh, miss the movie? Oh, the 14th. Um, Maybe it says here on the it's card. It's called Night Screams. Uh, first guess. <laughs> No, I don't say anything. I just I'm telling you, I'm shooting blanks top to bottom. Okay. Oh, here I got the right card. It's okay. R Ronnie oh, this and is just a rehearsal. Ronnie yeah. and Julie, is that it? No. It's beyond. Oh. That's something else. So somebody That's, else. No, no. Night screams. Ronnie and Julie sometime this Sunday. Oh no, Showtime this Sunday. I thought it said sometime. I thought it said sometime this Sunday. You know, it used to be. I, I, I am your aunt. I'm like your aunt Terry. You are. Yeah. Exactly. Sometime. Give me nine one one. Ronnie and Julie. That's you or yeah. not you? 
No, uh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, see, I'm very confused as it is. So well, here, you, I mean, which of those is you? Point to the one that's you. I'm on both of those. Oh, you're on Ryan both and Juliet, it's like Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It, or, or Romeo and Juliet, yeah. whatever yeah. you like. Yeah. Night Screams, NBC Night on April screams, 14th. Yes. Yeah. yeah, all right, good. Nice to see you, Terry. Thanks nice for being here. Nice to see you, The lovely Terry Gar, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. We'll be right back with the Night Stop family. is an old friend of ours and the author of this new book entitled Speed Bumps Flooring It Through Hollywood. It's in stores now. Here's the lovely Terry Gar, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, everybody. Well, my dear, it's a great pleasure to see you and fun to have you on the program. How you been? Good? I'm pretty good, yeah. yes. And uh, was it about two or three years ago that you made public uh, the, the fact that you were struggling with uh, multiple sclerosis? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Have I always confused you like this? Um, I think it was, yeah, maybe in 99 or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, and what is your life like now? I don't know. It's pretty much the same, except that I, um, I travel around the country talking about living with MS and doing these lectures, which are more or less um, like stand-up comedy. I do a lot of jokes in that. So actually, I came out and had a nice career, and now I'm paying my dues, like you did. You know when you did all those one-nighters? Mm -hmm. I mean, I did 60 cities last year. One night in the hotel, change your clothes, go, go to the plane, go to the next city, to tell your jokes. But it's fun. Yeah. It's good. And, and uh, do people, do you find, understand what MS is? Do, do, we, do people who do not have it and family members who do not have it, do they know what this is? Well, I don't know. You know, I, I try to break down some of the myths because I think people hear MS and go, oh, my God, you're dead, you're in a wheelchair. And I don't think it's true. I think right. you can go on um, with your life pretty well, which I have been able to do, thanks to being on your show so many times, you know. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I would have never gone on. <laughs> oh, it's so true. But, um... No, I'm not sure that, that, you know, that everyone understands what it's, you know, it can affect, it affects everyone in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it, it can be neurological or, I mean, it can be visual problems or cognitive problems, which of course I've always had. No, or, um, no, no, no. Or numbness and tingling and some people get, uh, you know, different things. Some people in a very rare uh, times believe that um, uh, Phil Spector's innocent. Uh, oh, no, wait a minute. Wait. Well, that's very rare. It's very that's rare. That's rare, you're and saying. And only in Hollywood. That, that, that's very rare. Yeah. Uh, now, the, the, only, the only thing I... <laughs> God. The only thing I know about it is it can be difficult to diagnose. Did you, did you have that problem when... Uh... Yes, yes, forever. I mean, I was always tripping and falling, and then by the time I got to the doctor, they said, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. So, mm -hmm. you know, mine went into remission for like 10 years, and then it would come back a little bit, and then nothing, and so I never knew what was going on. But finally, you know, when people, then I was, let's test you for MS. When I heard MS, you know, I looked it up on the internet. This is already by the time the internet was around there, and it said there's some medicines to help. So I said, well, if I have it, let me get on one of these medicines. So yeah. that's what I did. Mm -hmm. But I think in the early days, if people, if doctors saw me and thought it might be a mess, they went, let's just not tell her because there's nothing we can do about it anyway. So yeah, maybe that's what yeah. they did. I and and is, is there more that can be done about it now than uh, when you were originally diagnosed? Or is yes. there going to be a cure here? It's, it's the, uh, the nerve, the demyelination of the, the nerves. Is right. that correct? It's, it's the covering of the nerve uh, something or other. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's, like, it's like the insulation on an electrical wire wears exactly. off and then it, it short circuits the, yeah. uh, the electrical impulse. Right. It's like if I tell my, my brain tells my hand to move and it won't do it because mm -hmm. something stops it there. But yeah, that's about sort of what it is. But there is lots of medicine now to help yeah. us, and I feel, you know, better. But, you, you know, you, you seem just great. You know, you seem you're funny and, and happy and, and smiley and nice to have you here. Well, I'm funny and happy, and I am okay. But, well, you, you know, I was telling the folks earlier about this. You really did uh, save our show many, many times. because Dave. It's the truth. Because people... No, it's... Uh, And you would you would come on you would come on uh, frequently and 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 it was really good for us probably not good for you, but it, <laughs> but it was great for us because people started talking about oh did you see Terry Gar did you see Terry Gar did you see Terry Gar and it turned out that you were on our show and that was great. Well, that's so sweet. I think the exact opposite. I thought, oh, I'm so lucky to get to go on that no, show. No, that's not true. All these other actors don't get to do anything. And do, I... do, do people ever ask you about those uh, those days? 
All the time. Really? Oh, yeah, they want to know, you know, uh, you and Dave, you had a big thing. I said, well, yeah, we were married, but no one knew. No one knew, and now it just didn't work out. As you pointed out the other night to Nick Cage, 95% of the marriage <laughs> failed. They end in divorce. So ours did, too. Yeah, that's right. But it was, it was fun. I was really, uh, if you do a nightly show, sometimes it can get a little dull and a little tedious. And you were one of the few people that I really kind of got excited when you would be on. It was like going out on a date, you know, it was always fun. Dave, ah. I can't believe it. I think it was like, I always, you know, I'd get these calls and think, all right, somebody died. Who died? You know, they, somebody <laughs> dropped out. Somebody doesn't want to do that show. Yeah. I can't. Uh... <laughs> 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 do that show. Well, yeah, there. There was certainly that, well, too. Well, aren't there some people like Woody Allen? A lot of people don't, don't want any part right. of me. That's well, right. <laughs> well, they're crazy. Let, let's talk about yeah, uh, let's uh, early experiences for you in, in show business. You started as a, quite a young girl, didn't you, in show business? Yes, I did. <laughs> in life, too. <laughs> yeah. I started out young, and then I got older <laughs> what I as the time went on. Do you remember uh, early, early jobs? You were a dancer, too. And, oh, yes, yeah. yes, I was yeah. a dancer. And... Um, yeah, I, I wanted to be a ballerina, and then, of course, I, that wasn't good enough. So I wanted to be a star when right. I started dancing in all those movies. Right. And I, I remember you were on the Sonny and Cher uh, shows for a while. Uh, yes, I was. I was on Sonny no, and let's Cher. Just keep going. I advised her. It sounded under... a little like a bobcat, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep going. Some Paul Shaver thing. I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, and, I, I was on Sunny and Sharon, advised her with her wardrobe and things like that. And you did, uh, you, you were actually a roller skater as a kid and uh, worked at Disneyland? Well, yes, I did this. Uh, I was a Statue of Liberty on roller skates, and um, that was one of the jobs. It was a good job. It mm -hmm. wasn't a great job, but it was. Uh, and so when I auditioned for the show, I told them that I was an expert roller skater. And, and were you? And no, yeah. I wasn't. I had never done it, but I figured, well, how, how hard could it be? So um, the opening night, uh, we rehearsed it because um, you couldn't rehearse when the show, uh, when Disneyland was open. So we did it over, uh, I skated down this ramp when it was, it's a grand old flag, you know, mm -hmm. that, da, 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 and I skate down the ramp and I went right into the orchestra pit. <laughs> and I fell on top of this guy, uh, John Scott Trotter, I guess. It was oh, I remember that name, sure. And then I started swearing, cause, and I was wearing this Vega mic, uh -huh. and it was booming off the Matterhorn. And, <laughs> uh, and I think if... Uh, what kind of things were you saying? Get your hands off me, you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid, yeah, yeah. you know. And they tried, every time they tried to pick me up, my little feet would slip more. Oh, it was just a nightmare, I tell you. I wasn't good. It just was terrible. And uh, I'm mean, sure if Walt Disney was dead then, but he almost jumped out of his grave to say, you're fired, you're fired, you communist. You Com communist, really? Well, everything. You know, he was, he was very right wing. So, uh, now, now buy my book, please. Now tell me about oh, yeah. the... Uh... $24. That's right. Speed bumps. Is there anything to that uh, title? Do, do we uh, learn anything about you from the title well, there? Well, you know, speed bumps is kind of a metaphor that I, you know, you go along life and then a bump comes along and you slow down and you go over it and then you keep going. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it has its good points and its bad points, right. speed bumps. Yeah. And, and uh, flooring it through Hollywood, did, did you uh, do that? Did you sort of, uh, were you a, a bit of a renegade kind of racing through yes, your career? Yes, I like to speed in the cars like you. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't, you know, I, I just, I don't know why I put that on there. Flooring through it really doesn't make any sense. But, <laughs> but well, wait a minute. Does the oh. sun also rises? Does that make sense? You know, so I just decided to put it there. <laughs> yeah, that, that does make sense. The sun well, does I mean, it also does, it sets and it also I mean, rises. It's kind of obvious, isn't it? That <laughs> well, the sun I also rises I suppose and the sun yeah. also right. Thank you, Henry. I decided Fine. to put it Now listen. Yeah. Uh, I'm so happy to see you again, and it's been quite a while since you've been on the show, and, and I'm assuming uh, it's not because you've been mad at me. I'm assuming it's because you've been very, very busy. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So will you... <laughs> no, I thought you were mad at me for some How reason. How could I be mad at you? Well, you you saved know, my life, for God's sake. That is sakes. not true. Oh, I... it absolutely right, is true. Well, uh, but I... anyway, the point of this is can we, uh, can we encourage you to come back here again? Absolutely All not. All right, thank you. Well, next... <laughs> It's Terry Gar, speed bumps, flooring it through Hollywood. Thank you so much. Terry Gar. Great to see Terry again. Very funny. Always has nice. always been very funny. Yes. Just tremendous. I'm so happy she was here. Me too. Uh, my thanks to Terry Gar and uh, Matthew Broderick as well. Tomorrow on the program, Kelly Rippa, who's on that uh, show, uh, she's either Hope or Faith. I don't know. <laughs>
And uh, she's on with Regis and uh, Kelly Lee in the, and, and, yeah, in the morning. And also, uh, Hillary Duff will be here. Cheaper by the dozen, too. That's uh, tomorrow night. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody. <laughs>
But what kind of things did you do? Now, you were in, in Southern California, North you know, Hollywood. I was in a club, a social club. A social called, club. Called the Chanticleers. Mm -hmm. And we were this. We are the girls of Chanticleers. We aren't so very neat. We never change our underwear or to wash our dirty feet. We carry dice and decks of cards and bottle of whiskey, too. We're the girls of Chanticleers. Who the hell are you? Yeah, wow. We're a bunch of dirty wow. bastards. Oh, God. Budget. Me and Jason Bacon singing songs. But what, um, Ch Chanticleer, does, doesn't that mean rooster? Isn't that it what does. it is? You know. were in the rooster club. That's right. <laughs> that makes no sense now. I know. Well, what were the activities? Did you do anything? Fundraisers, parties, dances? No, we just had a club. And we mm -hmm. kicked people out that we didn't think were cool. Mm. Nice, huh? Yeah. Ruined their lives. Yeah. Did you ever get in any real trouble with the club? Yes, I did. Yeah. I was kicked out of the club for drinking beer at a slumber party. Whoa. I had a can of beer in my sleeping bag. Oh, <laughs> big deal. <laughs> Oh, you like that. And they tossed you right out? Exactly. Yeah. Out my ass. Whoa. <laughs> uh, and the, the, uh, another remarkable part about this, and I, I don't want to make you feel self-conscious about this, but not only have you recovered, still working, making films. Tell us about the, this movie. Ex Expired is the name of the movie? Expired. It's yeah. a wonderful movie written and directed by this woman, Cecilia Minucci. And I play twins in it. I play Expired is about a meter maid. I play her mother and I her, play her aunt. Identical twins. Two par uh, have you ever played twins in a film? Never. Have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I never have. I never really have. But now, wait a minute, this, uh, 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 now, uh, now, you, uh, you, you da dated, uh... What? It, 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 something with you and Elvis. Wasn't there something with you and Elvis? No, no, oh, no. come on, there was. No. Yes, there was. Dave, no. Yes, there was. You and me, baby. Oh. <laughs> Everyone asked me, what was it, what went on between you and Dave? I said, oh, totally sexual. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> That's all it was. time. <laughs> That's right. Well, filthy but, lie. But now, now, I don't want to put you on the spot here again, but wasn't there a thing with you and Elvis? I mean, you, you knew Elvis, right? <laughs> Did you know Elvis? You want to put me on the spot? Don't no, you? I don't. Just tell me, did you know Elvis or yes, not? Yes, I did. You worked with Elvis, the right? King. Uh -huh. yeah, in films. What film were you in with Elvis? Fabulous films. Yeah. Viva Las Vegas, Roused oh, About, there you Kissing go. Cousins, all the good ones. Yeah. The best. And, 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 and you can still see these all the time on television. And so when we, when we see you and Elvis, we can now know that there was a. Oh, yeah, big time. <laughs> no. I bet, but I, bet he, I bet he asked you out all the time. I no, bet he, no, no. Sure, he did. No, he didn't. You know, you're not under oath. All right, Elvis and I, bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, uh, now, Expired, uh, you can go see this film uh, tomorrow right here in That's New York right. City. And uh, let's show a clip of this. You know what uh -oh. this is? I think it's when I'm the twin that's, tr not Trixie, Tilda, the crazy twin. Okay, the crazy twin. All right, let's take a look. Expired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly how it happened. Hi. Here, let me see you. God bless you. Thanks, baby. Uh, the movie has expired. This is Terry Gar, and uh, it opens tomorrow. We'll be right back with Keisha Cole, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Thank you very much. I have not met this young lady. You have oh, met her backstage. You're a lovely girl. Her name is a uh, charming young actress. Yeah, uh, she is co-starring in a movie called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Would you welcome Terry Gar? Terry. Where are you headed? Were you going over to the band? I guess so. I'm not sure. How are you? I'm okay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You've never been with us before, have you? Well, yes, it was. I was once with them. Um... You weren't out with me? No. John Denver. Ah, I didn't think you were on with me. Hi. Hi, Charles. Hi. Hi, Ed. I'm good. How are you? I know Ed from before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We run into that frequently on the show. <laughs> you mean from the show, or...? Mm, I, I think I worked with him on uh, uh, Sonny and Cher. Several times. Mm-hmm. I see. With Howard Cosell. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you done a lot of, uh... You like Howard Cosell? Well, be honest. You can be pretty honest on a show like this, you see. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, I like Howard Cosell. He's okay. <laughs> now, you're saying that with reservations. I don't want to make you say something you don't want to say, but... Oh, he was funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. Yeah. But you haven't done a lot of these shows, have you? No. Yeah. Are you, are you comfortable all right? I mean, just... Yes, I'm real comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> My hands are stuck you in look this like chair. You're make, you look like you're making your first flight on uh, Trans Debris Airlines or something. Like Why don't you... Just relax and uh, okay. pretend you're sitting in my living room at home. Oh, sure. Okay. And the wife is out of town. No, I... No, I see that was... That was just silly. That was silly talk. You know that. Do I seem real nervous to you? No. no, are you? Why? No, I'm not real nervous. I just want to know if I seemed like it. I'm not nervous. <laughs> well, you... The chair is really not very comfortable, is it? I mean, no. to be perfectly... It's not Honestly, like, is your living room like this? <laughs> no, not... No, not really. Uh, see, the chair, you, you can't move in the chair. You're kind of, you're kind of sit there, and you can't really move the chair or something like that. I just want you to, to be you. Hmm. You know? And okay. Relax and just pretend we were out somewhere sitting and just talking. Okay. okay. Where are you from? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Where's home originally? Uh, here. The valley. Right in the right here in the valley? Mm-hmm. What part of the valley? Encino, Northridge? Uh... North Hollywood. North Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You up in place, eh? That, that's something. Mm-hmm. Went to school there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and after you left North Hollywood, you went oh. clear over to Hollywood, huh? Yes, yes, I did. And to, uh, See, sometimes I watch the show and I see people like me on it, go, just going, uh-huh, mm-mm, uh-huh. And I go, well, I'll never do that. And here I am doing it. Yeah. Do you, do you, watch, the, you watch our show frequently? Yes, I do. I like your show. Good. Thank you. But that's the problem with doing it, because I think I'm watching it. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> I find out that I'm here and that I have to be listening. That's and interesting. I have to answer the questions. Uh, yeah. It's not, yes. In other words, it's like you're watching the show now and you don't feel like a, a, a participant in it. That's interesting. Well, you are here. Well, I am? Yeah, sure. You were good, Charles. I was all right. But it, how many years was I nervous? <laughs> Remember how nervous I he used was, to be? No, really, this For was For many true. years. Isn't it true? Because Abs I love you and I'm in awe of you. And I, I was a mess. He would come it's on. True, wasn't I? And absolutely be a basket case. And it takes a long time and you're wonderful and just do what you want to do or you'll be fine. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I want to take my hair down. Okay. Now. Okay, fine. Be comfortable. So, now. Did a, did a light just go out? Well, yeah, lights, lights change. It's a big show, baby. They do a light change. I see. <laughs> what happened to this humble little scared man all of well, a sudden? I mean, it's... I found someone or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, here we are. You're not, you're not no of me at all. I mean... You... Huh? Oh, come on. Oh, yes. Why? Well, because I'm a fan of yours. Well, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, that's nice. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you are. Just... I mean, I'm really here talking to you, huh? Okay. Yeah. Anything particularly you'd like to talk about? Did anybody give you advice? No. People have been on the show before. Yes, but I don't think it was good advice. Well, my friend Buck Henry, who was uh, your Oh, there friend, you are, yeah. Wonderful. If he's watching, he'll probably kill me. But he said, just to say yes and no, and I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Buck. You're a big help. Yeah. That would help, yes. No. You were a dancer, I understand, originally. Mm-hmm. Where, where did you, uh... <laughs> See, I'm doing it! Well, that's all yes, right. That's I only, that only asks for yes or no. Mm -hmm. You know, what was one supposed to say when I say you were a dancer? That doesn't leave you, you know... If I said, how did you become a dancer? You can't very well say yes or no, right? So how did you become a dancer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to dancing school. That's a good way to do it. Good way. Scintillating. See, if you go to scuba diving school, you're not likely right. to become a dancer. You have to go to the school that teaches you what you wanted to become. Well, I went to ballet school and was very obsessed with it and got into ballet companies and, and then um, danced in Swan Lake and all those things. Did you really? Professionally? Yeah. I was always in the court of ballet, and I didn't think I was ever going to get very far with it because of uh, I always laughed, sort of. When you were doing the, being the ballet? Yeah. I mean, because all the ballets have stories to them, and the ballet dancers are supposed to come out and act out the stories. And they always acted so funny that I would laugh. It wasn't good for Yeah, me. you're not supposed to laugh during the ballet. No. If somebody's playing a swan and you were laughing, that's considered not... Uh, when they die. Not good show dying. business. That's right, because the swan does die and right at the end, and it's not supposed to be comical. Um, <laughs> uh, some doctors said that girls should not start ballet when they're really young, because... It, their bones aren't ready to do it, and it can, it can, uh, 
Have you heard the, have you heard anybody say that? What? One. Look, I haven't asked that question before, and I want to get it out before I go to that great kinescope up in the sky. Uh, you know what I'm saying, that your, your bones are not... Uh, you mean they're too uh, supple, you know, this bad... Then it bad. makes them turn out like ducks. There's something like that. <laughs> uh, that's possible. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> can't do this. Oh, yes, you can. You're doing just wonderful. Why? Okay. You're just doing wonderful. But what, what, are we being canceled? <laughs> what the hell is this? They're turning one light out at a time. These lights went out, another light just went out. You realize that China Shore is somewhere over New Mexico. That's right. <laughs> and you're still here. See, television is cruel. This is the way they can tell you that it's all over. They, they no. don't have the guts to come out and tell you. The they just tray. keep turning out the lights. So one night you come on your little candle on the desk here, and you'll be going. It's my fault. No. No. Have you been in other movies besides uh, this one you're doing, Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Well, yes. Hmm. Well, what's what's in... wrong? What's got a problem? No, no, light just went on and off. It's well, we don't care. What do we care? Light goes on. And off. Don't blood bother you. Maybe that has something to do with my movie. Ah, that's right. That has to do with extraterrestrial. Outer space. Outer and space. Stuff. And when the UFOs come, all the lights go on and off. It's a little weird. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just a movie. It's just a movie. <laughs> Do you believe in UFOs? No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. No, there's nothing been proven about them. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, credible people have said they've seen them and reported sightings. Some of them they can't explain. Which doesn't mean, of course, that they're from another planet either. Just because you can't explain something. No. That's right. That's right. Or yes. Tell, tell about the first and second stages, and then the third stage with the movies. Well, thank you. We have a here. light here. Yes, we need a key light like this. <laughs> Good evening. Just give us our guest look nice. Thank you. Yeah. We want you to have well lit and everything and so on. Until a low budget show and the host has a, has a flashlight. You want us to do a commercial? I think so. We're going to do a commercial. We're gonna, you're doing just fine, really. Mm -hmm. You really are. Okay. Yes, sure, sure. We'll do this. We'll come right back. mentioned in your movie now, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Has it opened yet? It opens uh, the 17th of yeah. November. And it's a fantastic, beautiful I've movie. I've heard and real good things it. about it. And I hope it's a big smash for you. Thank you. I did all right. you, Are you a gardener at all? Do you have little plants around your apartment and things like that? Yeah. Okay, good, because we have Thalassa Crusoe with us tonight. And she is one of this country's foremost gardening experts. She's a columnist for the Boston Sunday Globe. And she also shares her plant and gardening knowledge with television viewers in the Boston area. Would you welcome Thalassa Crusoe? It's nice to see you. Oh, it's nice to see you in bright lights, Johnny. Yes, we were almost, uh, thought we were going to have a blackout. It was a, is the plant poppy craze still going? It just seemed to be a resurgence a few years ago. I suppose because the environmentalists and people want to see green things and growing and... I don't think it's the environmentalists. I yeah. think it was just people who wanted plants. Something growing around them? Uh, it may have crested a little, but I don't think so. No, people want plants. They want them tremendously. I bet you have plants, don't you? Yes, I do. Do you have plants in front, of, hanging plants in front of every window? No, I just have them sitting there. I mean, they're not hanging, they're sitting. Everything they're... you say will be used against you. I'm sure of it. What's a good plan for a beginner? What to, to, to start with? 